As you design and build applications within AppSmith, you may realize that you need to add some custom logic within the application itself. By custom logic, I mean using JavaScript functions to write and build upon actions within the application itself. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the JS editor, and we're going to be exploring how it's useful, why the JS editor works, and some quirks about the JS editor and ways to get around them. Hey, what's up? I'm Nonzo, a developer advocate in AppSmith, and in today's video, we're going to be talking all about the JS editor. I think it's a really clever piece of engineering, and I think it's worth exploring and seeing how best we can use it within your applications. So let's get started with why the JS editor is even useful in the first place. The editor is what allows you to write valid JavaScript and have it exported as what we call a JS object. This JS object is what allows you to write custom and complex code and have it accessible throughout any of the pages you create within your application. You will notice that when you create a new JS object, it exports one object containing key value pairs of any of the primitive types. This includes strings, numbers, booleans, and yes, even functions. The power to create functions gives you the flexibility to create custom and complex code, be it synchronous or asynchronous, and have it accessible within your application itself. So let's take a look at how the JS object works within AppSmith. Before diving into the JS editor, let's first orient ourselves to what we get with the editor. When we create a JS object in the sidebar, we are navigated to the main entry point into the JS editor allowing us to write and export a JS object. It is worth noting that only one JS object can be exported from one file at a time. This JS editor is split into three separate sections. We have the top section, which allows us to edit the name of the JS object and run our code at the same time with the run button. We then have the code editor section. And finally, we have a pane with a few tabs with information about our code that we've just written. Changing the name at the top will change the name of the object binding on pages. For example, if the default name is JS object 2, the subsequent pages refer to this JS object as JSON object 2. And then the property we want to access as well. The run button is something special. If there's any function within the JS object that we want to execute, we can select which function we want to run and then click the run button to execute that respective function. This brings us to the panel at the bottom of the JS object. This panel has three separate tabs. The response tab, which shows the returned value of the executed function. The error tab, which shows the syntax errors that may have occurred while writing the code. And finally, the log tab, which shows any function execution logs or any console log statements. The editor has a built-in linter that makes it easy to ensure that the code that we write is a valid JavaScript. One cool feature is that if there are any linting errors, then the run button will be disabled and our code will not be executed. Further, the lint error will be highlighted in red, making it easy to find the error within our code. It becomes second nature to navigate through the JS editor within AppSmith, but to further solidify the core concepts that we've talked about, let's see how we can use the JS editor to transform some data that we've gotten back from an API. So we've made an API request, which returns data in the following form. Now, the field we're interested in is the date field as the API returns the data in the UTC format. Now, while this UTC format is very readable and understandable to computers, it may not be the best way to present the date. And so we need to write a JavaScript function that takes the date from this format to this format. So let's use the JS editor to do that. So when we create a new JS object, we can see that the editor is populated with some sample code. It's exporting a JS object that includes the following key value pairs. MyVar1, which is an empty array, MyVar2, which is an empty object, MyFun1, which is a synchronous function, and MyFun2, which is an asynchronous function. 
As we mentioned before, these are just a few of the valid primitive types that can be exported from the JS object. But we're now going to write our own function in order to transform the date property that we've gotten back from our API. In another JavaScript object, we've written a function that mocks the return data from an, an, the API. We can see that the function returns an array of objects that have some properties, including the date property. In our new JavaScript object, we can call this function in order to get the return value, and then loop through the array and modify the date field for each item. We're going to be using the help of the moment library within AppSmith to help us accomplish this task. Finally, once all the date properties have been transformed, we can then return the new transformed array in order to use it within our application. Just like that, we were able to transform the data that we received from an API into a more readable form using the JS editor that is built into AppSmith. It's a really powerful tool and it allows you to write complex code bases in your favorite programming language, JavaScript. Now, it would be really cool to see what you can build using the JS editor and it allows you to build more tools and more complex tools within AppSmith itself. All right, we hope you found this useful and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.